everybody, how you doing? Uh, today we are going to work on how to play with a metronome. Welcome again to Drum Mission. Um, the purpose of this channel, as I've said many times, is to teach you how to practice. And if all you have is a metronome that you downloaded on your iPhone or Android, a couple of books you ordered from Amazon, and you don't even have a place, <clears throat> excuse me, you don't even have a place that you can play drum set all the time, you have to either uh, rent a room and you can only go a couple times a week, or anything like that, how can you become a great drummer? Well, the most important thing for all drummers is time. Time. That is your number one job. That is your job. Keep the time for the band. Because you've got to understand, when you're, when you're playing in a, in a band situation, everybody have a, has a slightly different interpretation of time. You may have a keyboardist that... Uh, pushes that is always kind of rushing a little bit. You may have a guitar player that might be dragging or a bass player that might like to drag or or better, I hate the word drag is bad, it likes to play way behind it. So you have to kind of bring them all together. And that's kind of what creates the groove. So I do work in a few situations where there's a keyboard player who's fantastic and I love him, but he definitely tends to play way ahead. And uh, I've been in that situation where the bass player likes to play right behind me. So I am the bridge. I'm the bridge, but I can't let either one of them pull me. My center of time has to be really, really strong. I have to really understand how those subdivisions and the space between the beats. I have to really know where that is and how it feels and how to be consistent in it. And at the same time, uh, you know, I don't believe that you need to be like a metronome because they got drum machines for that, that can do that really well. I do think it's okay if the time breathes to some extent. You know, if there's a solo and if you're playing at 105 beats a minute and the thing pushes a little to 105.6, okay, that's fine. And you go back down to, you know, 105 or maybe as an overcompensation, you go to 104.8, whatever. That's fine. That's good. That's human, and it's okay. And songs throughout history, great songs. Uh, Dear Prudence is one of them. It's a brilliant tune by the Beatles. Definitely does this uh, throughout its uh, feel, but yet it's still a great song. So within reason, you want to have good time. And I got to tell you the truth, you know, it's going to be different from night to night, depending on how much coffee you drink, how tired you are, all that kind of stuff is going to come into play. And, the, and the, how the band is, uh, is communicating between each other. So how do we develop this good time? There's a lot of videos on the web about this very subject. A kajillion of them. And there's a lot of them that talk about putting the metronome like on the E of 1, the E of 2, the E of 3, the E of 4, or the duh, or something like that. I think that has some merit. That is, is not bad. However, I don't think it does as much, develop, as much to develop your time as it does to develop your creative abilities in time. In other words, uh, you have that kind of offbeat thing and you can, come up, you can come up with kind of neat little things to do around the kit and incorporate that E or that duh and that's really cool and it will do something to help uh, improve your time. But if you're like me, if you're one of those people like me who's essentially a local session drummer, Right on, on Friday night, I'm playing swing. On Saturday night, I'm playing R&B. Uh, next week after that, I'm playing straight up rock. Whatever. And I have to, and a lot of times, there's no time for rehearsal. So I have to kind of hear the tunes and figure out the, the groove and the feeling like that. Right? I don't have a lot of time to practice and rehearse to get comfortable. I have to already be comfortable. So I may make some mistakes on the form of the tune because maybe I don't remember the tune they called out, maybe I never heard it before, all that kind of thing. But my time has to be solid, has to be solid. One of the ways that I like to get there is by putting the metronome at slow tempos like 70, 75 on just beat four. Now that's something I can do. I don't have to do mathematical computations while I'm playing. I don't have to re keep reminding myself that that's the duh or the E. I know it's four. It's very easy to comprehend. And if you're doing it at like 70 beats a minute, that's a lot of space between clicks. 
right, that you have to fill in the gaps. So you're saying, Glenn, why not put the metronome on one? Well, that would be giving me the downbeat, and I want to provide the downbeat. And maybe in the grand scheme of things, there's not much of a difference, but in my brain, there is. There is. So how did I get there? How did I get to be able to do that? And I am able to do that. To some extent, I can do that, and I do practice that on a regular basis. But I didn't start out doing that, right? And neither should you. So over the next two or three months, we are going to improve your time. You work with me, you stay with me, we are going to improve your time. But let's start where I started. At a slow tempo, I picked 55. That is under 60. That's down there. You can go slower if you want. I like 55. I have a rule. I uh, was taught by a great keyboard player, matter of fact, the keyboard player for uh, Julio Inglesas uh, told me once it's not, uh, not a really good idea to spend a lot of time practicing things that you will not use. So practicing much slower than 55 is not something that you're going to use on a regular basis. So I like 55. Uh, all right, so I'm going to put that 55 first on the eighth notes. Well, why, Glenn? Isn't that 110? Yes, but I'm going to make it the eighth notes because the quarter notes between 1 and 2 at 55 is greater than a second. It is longer than a second. That's a lot of space. I want to feel those subdivisions. And I pick a figure. This is a paradiddle diddle figure. I pick a figure, and I want you to see it. All right, it's four paradiddle diddles and two paradiddles, two single paradiddles. And then I do a little time in between, right? We do a little time. And... I do that because I want to cross the bar line. I want to really have to think about the creativity of the figure and not the time, but still have good time. So I'm doing something, not just playing kind of a very square, mm, boom, boom, boom. I'm doing something a little creative with it. At the same time, I'm letting the metronome teach me where those eighth notes lie at such a slow tempo. Let's give it a shot. First, let me show you the figure I'm going to play. Uh, again, four paradiddle diddles. Here's the paradiddle. Right, left, right, right, left, left. I'm going to lead uh, the first batch of this with my right hand, and then I'll lead it with my left hand. Uh, and the uh, single paradiddles, you know them. Right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. So it's paradiddle diddles. Right, left, right, right, left, left, and Right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. Four, four paradiddles and two single paradiddles. Here we go. Okay, that is clicking on the eighth notes, and I want to count this through with you so you can see and how it crosses the bar line, okay? You ready? Starting with my right. Two, ready, play. One, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and... Two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one, two, three, four, one, two. Now with my left. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and two and three and four and one. All right there, guys. So, what was I just doing? I was crossing the bar line. I was really uh, not having to pay attention so much to the metronome, except as a guide, letting that kind of soak in, those subdivisions soak in. Now, why did I count everything? And this is very important. I, I have about 30 students when things are good. You know, in the pandemic, I don't right now, but normally I, I keep about 30 or 40 students. And I gotta tell you the truth, my students, they all hate to count. My teacher, Joe Casadas, you know, I always praise that man. Uh, uh, look him up. He's on the internet, Joe Casadas. He was called the drummer's drummer. Uh, great, great player. Um, made me count everything. And let me tell you why I think this is Glenn's theory. It's a good thing to do. Uh, the motor cortex that controls your left hand, your right hand, all that stuff, your left foot, your right foot, all that stuff, uh, 
is controlled by your motor cortex, which is about the size of a walnut. Your language center is like a third of your brain or something like that. There's a lot of memory space devoted to speaking. So I am processing those subdivisions not through my little flash drive motor cortex, but through my largest CPU, PU, my largest CPU, my language center. I'm devoting a lot of memory to this because I want to feel where those subdivisions are, right? I want to feel where it is. Now we're going to do the same thing. But I'm going to take away the eighth notes and we're going to do it to the quarter notes. Now I am going to be in charge of the subdivisions, not the metronome. Again, we are still at 55 more than a second between beats. Um, just a little side, a little side note on that, on that I wouldn't do this just once or twice. I would do this for 15, 20 minutes while I was watching Netflix. I would literally put on Netflix, put my metronome on the side of my couch and my pad on my coffee table and start working this stuff out. All right, so that I ingrain it in me. It becomes part part of my being and that's what we want so let's go to step two let's take out the eighth notes okay let's do the very same thing we just did except now we are clicking on quarter notes here we go one two starting with the right hand three four one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and and three and four and one and two and three and four and one two three four one two switching hands now three four one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and and three and four and one and two and three and four and one two three four one two three four there you go there you go so, and that's the other beauty of this is you don't have to this is not about practicing fast don't do fast we will increase increase our subdivisions not the click but the subdivisions and so that we can get some speed on this, but this is not a thing to practice fast. Let's do phase two right now in this. Phase two, which are triplets, a little different. Okay, we're going to leave that on quarter notes, and phase two, I'm going to stop it for a second. Phase two is the triplet. So if you're playing a triplet tune, maybe a 12-8 or a 6-8 or a, a shuffle, and the whole song is in triplets, most guys are pretty good at that. If you're doing a straight eight song and, and the whole song is straight eights, most guys can do that. But it's the, the switching from triplets to sixteens to eights, which is really difficult. Really difficult. The tendency is to push or drag one or the other, right? And the goal here is not that your triplets are super precise, no that your center of time, where the beat is, is very strong in you. Very strong in you. So, if you have a keyboard player in your band that's pushing, or a guitar player that's pushing, or a bass player that's dragging, or the horns are rushing through a line or something like that, your center stays. And believe me, I've been in situations where I've really been pushed around. And sometimes I let, I've let them get to me. And I had to really go back to my metronome and develop that strong center of time. I'm going to say this over and over. Strong center of time. So here we go. We're going to do a triplet thing now. And I use a slightly different figure for that. Uh, I like to combine the paradiddle diddles. I'm going, to, I'm going to do two now. Two paradiddle diddles. And then quarter note. Uh, well, it's, 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 a, it's a hard thing to say. It's based on the chord note triplet, but um, we're going to do uh, three single paradiddles. So let me count it through for you before I do it. It's 
one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three. So what just happened there? By doing in triple a triplet time or a twelve a time, depending on how you want to uh, think about it, um, doing those figures, my hand switches. My hand switches. So I go from a right hand lead then to a left hand lead. When I'm done with those two leads, I'm back to a groove. You can even put the groove in the middle. That's fine. It doesn't really matter. But when I finally get those chord note triplets done, one and a two and a three and a four and a one, two, right? And then I'm there playing that groove. Um, so here we go. 55. I'm going to do that figure, two paradiddle diddles, three single paradiddles, triple at time against 4-4 four, four at 55. One and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a I apologize, by the way, I ended up doing four paradiddles and not two. It just felt better to me at the time, and I don't know why. But there you go. There you go, that's phase two. So now I'm playing the triplets and going back to the chord notes. That, again, that's more than a second. Right? You don't want to play eighth notes here. You want to let that space be. Switch hands. You know, play the groove. And there you have it. Now, so now, the tough part. Switching. Eighth notes, triplets. Eighth notes, triplets. So, I usually use a simple figure for this. Nothing that's that crazy. Uh, but I do like the chord note triplet. Uh, version of those uh, uh, single paradiddles. So let's do four paradiddles, or maybe two. One and two and three and four and one and two, four. Three and four and one and a two and a three and a four and a one and two. Now I'm not even really sure if I'm right. Let's do it against the metronome. Let's do it against the metronome right now. I'm going to show you how this works. I'll be going back and forth. Eighth notes, triplets. Eighth notes, triplets. What am I doing? Building my center of time. And I'm telling you the truth. When I do this, I see a difference in my time that evening if I'm playing that evening. That evening. When I lay off of this, I see a difference in my time. I get my center of time gets weaker and then that keyboard player who's rushing can push me a little bit that guitar player who's rushing his solo can push me and if the song started out at 108 we end up at 115 right that's a possibility but when I do this and the keyboard player is rushing during his solo and the song started out at 108 we end up at 109 if I let them. That's how good this is. And this is only phase one. We're going to get to phase two. I want you to practice this for a week and let's do phase two. Let's set this up. 55 beats a minute right there. We're going to do eighth notes and then the triplets. Here we go. Two, three, four. One and two and three and four. Three. 
always groove in the middle. One. And let's do it again, because even when I did it, it was okay, but it wasn't great. Again. One. Two. Now. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and four and a one. Spot on, man. That's spot on. Here we go. One more time. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one. Now I'm going to do this with the left hand lead. And one, two, three, four. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one two three four one two three and a four there you go I counted through it all I played through it all and you could hear you could hear now how my transitions between the eighth notes and the triplets got better and better and better and better. And so I'm doing this in, in like a seven minute video. Imagine, imagine if you do this 15, 20 minutes, half hour a day. And let me tell you the truth. And I'm going to say this a couple of times here. I'm going to repeat myself now. In the end, the reason you're hired and fired is because of time. All right. If you are a great time player, you will work. If you are a great time player, you will work. If you are a great time player, you will work. If you've got chops better than Vinnie Kelly, you do. You work a bit. If you show them all the time, you work a bit. You work some, there'll be people that will hire you. But that guy who has the good time, he work all the time. He work all the time. And if you don't have a lot of time to practice a lot of stuff, you know, I myself right now don't have a lot of time to work on the most cool Vinny lick that there is. But I do have time to do this because I'm in my apartment and this doesn't bother anybody. All right? Give it a shot, my friends. Live well. Be well.